Okay, a little change of plans. Today's episode should have been about filters. I planned it out, created a demo, and only when I started polishing the intro, I realized it didn't make sense to talk about filters without explaining databases first. And databases is not a topic I could cut corners with. I actually want to explain them properly with illustrations and good examples. But that was yesterday and never in my life would I have prepared an episode like that on such a short term. So to buy myself some time, I'll do something different today. It's a new category of videos that I actually had in mind for the launch, and it is the series of masterclasses. A less edited and perhaps a slower paced type of videos where I show you some of the docs I built and explain in greater detail why I built this or that part in this way. And hopefully for you it's not just the glimpse into the actual work that I'm doing, but also some good knowledge and inspiration. And to kick things off, I have a very simple but very interesting use case to cover. It's a tiny dog that we use in an offline business that my wife and I have, and some time ago I actually made a promise to talk about it in the community. And it is curious because it literally saved us days of war. So without further ado, you know the drill. Okay, so a few words about our business. As you might or might not know, Mrs. Coda Tricks and I own a frozen food shop. It's a real mom and pop shop and we kinda inherited it by accident. I'll tell you more about it in the live stream. Here we produce and sell many sorts of traditional Ukrainian frozen foods, such as meat dumplings or pelmeni, pierogi or vareniki, pancake wraps with different fillings, cottage cheese pancakes and cheese balls, meatballs, patties and other kinds of foodstuffs that you can just take home and put them in a the freezer and then reheat or cook them. And since we don't just resell but produce them, one of the many things we need is the robust way to calculate the cost of production so that we could adjust our prices and know if we are making money or losing money, especially in this tumbling wartime economy. Now, of course, there is a gazillion stores out there and none are too different from each other. The processes are largely the same. And therefore, there's a lot of ready and off-the-shelf software that can do this for you. And perhaps the most popular platform for that in Ukraine is a tool called Poster. Now, this is not an ad and I'm not affiliated and jumping forward, we didn't take them. And that's not because I'm a Coda expert and would do everything in Coda. You'll actually understand later why. Besides, there's little chance that you will take it for yourself because it's very tailored for the local Ukrainian market with all the local accounting and regulations and stuff. But let's take a look at it anyway to see what we've turned down. Aside from all the point of sale stuff, which is, well, its main feature as the name implies, it also has all that you'd want from a store management app, such as sales management, salary management, inventory management and what's important for our case here ingredients dishes and preparation management and for a cafe it's perfect like you can configure your salad you specify how many grams of this or that ingredient is taken when you're preparing a salad and then when somebody orders one all those quantities will be automatically deducted from your inventory but the thing is that our production doesn't make salads it does things in batches and we apply a different thinking process to our production calculation we know that to prepare a 10 pounds batch of pork and beef dumplings we need to take 5 pounds of dough and 5 pounds of the filling. But we can only knead our dough in batches of 3 pounds. And we know how much water and wheat flour we need to take for a batch like that. And for the meat filling, we actually know how much salt and pepper to put per pound of meat, not per batch. And this is exactly that kind of flexibility that we cannot get from an off-shelf tool. Sure, we could do all the mental calculations and normalize all those grammages so that we knew exactly how much of each of these ingredients to take per one pound. But that totally defies the reason of having a calculator like that. In the end, that's what we want. We want the computer to calculate all of this for us. So what happened next? You probably guessed it. I sat down and created a CodaDoc. And here it is. Here's the star of our today's video. As I said, this doc is really tiny. It only has two pages. And yeah, it's not optimized for being zoomed in. We will shrink it when we get to it. And there is just four tables, two of which are simple lookup tables for categories, basically. The main table, of course, is a table of items, which lists all items of three different types, such as end products, simple ingredients, which are the items we buy from the store or our suppliers, and compound ingredients, which are ingredients created out of other ingredients. Now, to illustrate the logic, in the end we have end products which we put into packaging and into our storefront freezers. And in the beginning we have basic products which we are purchasing from suppliers or in the nearby stores or from a local farmer's market. Now, of course, when the kitchen is preparing their product, they have all sorts of prefabs in the process, intermediary ingredients, and it makes it a lot of easier to think in the terms of these prefabs. For example, a dumpling is a dough wrapper and meat filling. And now to make that dough wrapper, you take basic ingredients and mix them together. And with the filling, 
grilling the same. You buy unseasoned meat and season it. And then you mix these two together in a secret proportion. And then of course we can reuse the same kind of dough for all sorts of dumplings and the same sort of filling for meatballs. And of course these compound ingredients can also have compound ingredients. Like the potato filling for potato dumplings is composed out of boiled potatoes which are not what we buy directly. We buy raw potatoes and then boil them. Then fried onions with paprika which itself is onions and paprika and it's fried in sunflower oil. But also it has salt and pepper which are simple ingredients. And the same applies to products, by the way. They can also consist of both compound and basic ingredients. And because of all that flexibility and how some things can be composed out of other things and then they can be reused in other things, and also because in the end each item is characterized by one metric, it's price per kilogram. A kilogram is a unit of weight that we use outside of America and it's roughly equal to 2.2 pounds. And the only difference is that for basic ingredients the price is an input and for products and ingredients it's a calculated value. I decided that all of these items belong on the same common table of items because it's just much easier to work with it like that. Oh and lastly of course we have the fourth table where we set up our compositions. It's probably gonna be easier if you look at it grouped by an item. This is the table where each row describes an inclusion of one ingredient into one parent item along with the proportion or how much was taken of this ingredient to compose this item. And if we scroll down we see that for each products and for each compound items we will have their compositions described in these rows along with the grammages of each ingredient. Oh and of course this is our real dog that I translated for you into English. I think it took me longer to translate it than to actually build it. And you all will have a chance to get it in the end of the video will tell you how. But then these are our real recipes and our recipes are our intellectual property. So what I did here I messed up the proportion so that its grammage is reduced from minus 40 to plus 40 percent randomly. And for these to not be as suspicious I also rounded up these values values to the significant digits accordingly. So if you want to steal our recipes, good luck on scrambling them. They will only be available to patrons. Nah, I'm kidding. My wife would kill me. So these were our tables. Now let's look at interfaces. Okay, let's start with page one. There is nothing much to look at here really. It's just the table of simple ingredients grouped by a category. The price and weight are inputs and price per kilogram is calculated as one divided by another. The coolest part of it is probably the conditional formatting that prompts you to fill this table out. And besides this is not even our main page. It's actually last in our workflow. The thing is you are not supposed to add items to this page. It will get populated by ingredients when you set up your dishes. So let's go and look at the real main page. And yeah, let's zoom out and hide the panel to see it in its all glory. Now these are two detailed layouts and they are actually the same. The left one is configured to show only the list of end products and the right one shows only the list of compound items. In a way this mirrors how it works in poster. There is a separate list of dishes and the list of preparations, which is how they call their compound ingredients. And to be fair, in the original version of my dog I actually had these two views in two separate pages. But before we could actually use it and very timely in those days, Coda launched a wide layout. And we could finally put these detail layouts side to side and it made all the difference in the world. In a moment I'll show you why. Now the reason for two views is that the list of items on the left, the products, was already populated. We just imported it from our menu. And the list of ingredients was empty because we haven't populated a single recipe yet. And then we would go item by item and set them up and mark them as resolved and as we were adding compounds here and those weren't compounds from the list but we would create some new compounds like magic dust they would be considered a compound item by default and they would appear here and this is where we can continue setting it up but if it's not a compound item all it takes is this click to turn it into a basic ingredient and all the basic ingredients that we added when we were setting our dishes would eventually end up on this list and that's why I said that this will be the table that you set up in the end. And believe it or not, but a setup like this allows for super rapid data input. Like this is ingenious, I myself am impressed. And to demonstrate you how easy it is, I just made a copy of this doc, deleted everything but the products, and I'm going to show you a live demo how I set a few of these up. Pork and beef dumplings is dough and filling. We don't have any ingredients yet, so we just add it and beef and pork filling just the same. Now we set up dough, it's wheat, flour, sunflower oil and salt. 
Oh, look what happens when I type one of the old ingredients, like water. It seems like this dog has actually some phantom memory of stuff that I just deleted. It restored the row for me. Well, I should have released this episode already, so I don't have another half a day to wait until Coda cleans up old references. So I'll just be making typos. So flour, water, vegetable oil and salt. And by default it created us compound ingredients, but all it takes is this button click to turn them into basic ingredients. Now we only have to fill out the proportions, like take four parts of flour, two parts of water, a large spoon of oil and half a teaspoon of salt. And now we should also specify the output, which we can just click this button to fill it out with the total of these ways. Or actually you can adjust it manually, like maybe half a kilogram went to waste, it got stuck to the sides of the kneading machine. This is especially useful when we just take an ingredient and do something with it, like we squeeze carrot juice, we get one kilogram of juice out of one and a half kilograms of carrots. Or we boil potatoes, or we fry something and part of the water vapors out. And this is super logical, because that's how we do it. We know that we take this much carrots and we get this much juice out of them. Because in poster you have to enter them as percentages, like peeling losses, boiling losses. Like who the hell would calculate the percentages? Okay, back to our dog. Let's set up beef and pork filling. I'll just fast forward to the moment when it's done and see how when we search for salt or water, it is already in our list. So we don't need to add it again. Set the proportions, check and fill the total, check. This is done, dough is done. You can see that these changed color from red to violet. Five parts of that, five parts of that give you 10 parts of total. And you are done with this product. And for large pork and beef dumplings, the proportion is the same, so there is no need to set it up again. We can just select the pork and beef dumplings and copy the composition here. Now, sure, the prices are zeros, but that's because we haven't filled out this table yet. Let's populate it with some data. Check. And yes, this belongs here and these belong here. And when we go back to our calculator, you can see that prices are populated here, they are calculated here, and all these calculations propagate to our final products. And once we have all these proportions set, all we have to do is update these prices when the prices change and everything else will recalculate accordingly. And this is really as simple as that. But at the same time, this bespoke interface makes a massive difference. For comparison, let's try and set up the same thing in poster. Let's create ourselves a dish. Dumplings with pork. It's already asking us for our price. You cannot create a product without a price. Okay, whatever. Okay, let's set up the recipe. Let's add an item. Okay, we have nothing of interest. Add an ingredient. Opens up a panel. But this only lets us create a basic ingredient and I want to set up dough. So I need to close this, save the dish. And of course, since it's a web app, it just loads forever. You go to preparations, create a preparation, add an ingredient. And here I, for example, add wheat flour and I add water and it's already there and I add oil and thank god it's already there and salt and okay we set it up so let's input the numbers and yeah it gave us the total and it says that some prices are missing so it cannot calculate us our cost but remember we said that some part of the dough goes to waste because it sticks to the kneading machine well there is really no way to override this number you can unlink the net from gross and try to tweak these numbers so that let's say we lose these 50 grams we lose these grams and here we lose one kilogram and this is like super arbitrary at the moment but yeah okay it can be done fair enough and now you save this and it you wait and i really don't want to repeat the process for filling so let's just set up our dish with just the dough and let's say we take four kilograms of dough and we get yeah four kilograms of stuff and we save this dish now we need to fill out the cost of ingredients. Do you think it's as easy as editing an ingredient? No, you cannot edit its price. You have to go into inventory, into your stock, or actually no, into your supplies. And you need to create a supply and get your wheat flour here. And you have to enter a quantity as if you ordered 50 kilograms of flour and you paid like 13 per kilogram and you restocked it. And only now you will have a price appear on your ingredients. 
And God forbid it's not the right price because if you want to change it and you try to restock flour with yet another supply and you specify a different cost for the supply, it will not just apply the latest cost. No, it will take the rolling average. So yes, yeah, somebody was really overthinking this system. Now, take a look at the number of products we have on our menu. How do you think? How much time would it take to fill this all out in poster? I'll tell you, literally days. I was evaluating poster for our food shop and I tried setting up the first first set of dumplings and all that clicking back and forth and into those panels and tabs and back and waiting for it to load forever drove me completely mad in the first 15 minutes. I couldn't get a single product done and I'm not the stupidest person on the earth. You know how long it took me to build this dock? About 3 hours. And can you guess how much time it took my wife, me and our chef to sit down and populate it with all the recipes? Another 3 hours and that's including all the coffee breaks we had. And just like that we accomplished a few days worth of work in just a few hours thanks to simply having a few views side by side instead of having them scattered all over the pages of your app. This is what user experience is all about. Like again, literally, what solved it here is having two panels side to side, going through products on the left, setting up compound ingredients on the right, having this button to cycle the type of the ingredient, and pretty much nothing else. And this is perhaps the greatest example at how Coda bloody rocks. And the coolness doesn't end there, this is just the template on its own and I haven't yet shown you how we connected it to the rest of our system. We actually went ahead and plugged all sorts of other data into it, like the sales data to know which products are more popular so that we could put a higher profit margin on them. And also in our final table we are including the cost of packaging and labels and labor and taxes and fees and also rent and utilities. So truly when you go bespoke and you go with Coda, the sky is the limit. Okay, this wasn't a quick and easy demo at all. It's 3 a.m. now and I still have to edit this thing. I sort of regret I didn't just do an episode on databases, but at least I really hope that you got properly inspired. Now there's two pieces of news to break, the sad ones and the good ones. The sad news is that we are considering selling this business. And it's no surprise we really got it by accident. Neither my wife nor I had anything to do with food before. She is an artist and I'm an IT guy and it's a wonder that we managed not just to preserve the 14 year old business but actually grow it a little. But all that said we don't really have the capacity to develop it. We both are trying to get by and I'm busy with these videos like I'm still doing all my editing myself and at the moment I cannot afford to outsource it to somebody else. And besides selling the business would give me that extra runway that Patreon doesn't give me yet. Gosh, now it feels like I'm guilt tripping you into supporting me on Patreon. Did I fall that low already? No, but really, if Patreon could cover all my other needs, we would gladly keep the business and would have more energy and time to invest into it. Our products are really best in town, you can guess by how much of a perfectionist I am. It would be a shame if a person who bought it compromised quality for profits. Which gets us to good news, I don't want to guilt trip you into supporting me on Patreon. I want to encourage you to support me on Patreon. And I'll do it by offering this doc that you've just seen as a Patreon exclusive. You will get this doc if and only if you support me for a whole year up front on a large fries tier, additionally to all the other premium docs that you will get. I'm a little bit behind on videos, but I'll send them the next weekend, I swear. And this offer is also only valid until March 14 inclusively. After that, you won't be able to get this dock anymore. Not for $100, not for $200, not for $1000. Whoever gets it now, gets it. If you're serious about Coda, disassembling this dock will be a nice exercise for you. So yeah, a mandatory Patreon link, 3am, a can of energy drink, a long night ahead. See ya.